Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. May God bless the reading of his word this morning. Next, we have the sermon titled Hope by Reverend Dr. Peter Tangetui. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, did you all have a good Thanksgiving service, uh, Thanksgiving season? That's good? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't here, as you probably all noticed. So uh, praise God that uh, things went well, especially uh, the ministry of uh, Ajahn Herb. So, so thank you for that. Um, it's like, wow, you know, the season of Advent is here. I mean, could you believe that? No? <laughs> uh, you know, we, in a sense, we sort of start this countdown towards uh, the celebration of the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, I don't know, I don't know about you, but I do think most of us, you know, we look forward to that day, I think, unless we're all, have, you know, things we need to do, we're kind of swamped. Uh, but uh, we look forward to that day in general, uh, especially all the other events we have planned for this month in connection uh, with this time of year. Uh, so, so is that good? Are you looking forward to it? All right. <laughs> now, I mentioned, I think it was last week or the previous week, that uh, we are taking a break from the book of Revelation uh, this Advent and Christmas season. You know, we've been going through Revelation, uh, I think, starting this summer. Uh, instead, we will take up a topic that needs a few sermons to develop. And uh, a lot of times when the Lord gives us important topics to discuss, it takes more time to cover, as there are things about it that, in a sense, need greater explanation or more emphasis. Uh, so, you know, in the past we've covered topics such as, you know, gossip or stewardship or armor of God. Um, there is simply too much to say about them uh, that, you know, most of those topics, they deserve, you know, three, four, or five, or six sermons. Uh, the same goes for uh, what we will take up today. Now, as for what we'll take up today, uh, I guess, you know, the sermon title, it says hope, and I realize that. But I think uh, at this point, you know me by now that half the time my sermon titles don't really correspond to the actual actual sermon itself. Uh, for one reason or another, the sermon titles the, just hasn't been a top priority for me, and maybe that's something I need to change. You know, we gotta use every means possible to deliver the message. Uh, so, you know, so, so Betsy might remind me of that, just make a, make a better sermon title. Uh, but, but if I were to change the title to reflect today's message, you know, if I were able to do that, it would have been something like, you know, the case of the unsaved Christian, or the Christian in name only, or religious but not saved, or in other words, the unsaved Christian. You know, that's sort of where the title was going to flow. And uh, those titles, in a sense, tell you the kind of person Jesus describes today in uh, in Matthew's passage, in the Matthew Gospel of Matthew passage. Uh, the topic of today's scripture tells us about uh, the existence in Jesus' time and also in our modern times of people who profess Jesus as their Lord and Savior or, or Master and who also prophesied, drove out demons, and performed miracles. Um, in other words, these people not only professed faith in Christ, but they also did ministry in Jesus' name. But in the end, during the end time judgment, so you see there's still a revelation here. <laughs> it turns out that these professed followers of Christ, uh, they were not followers at all. These people will not end up in the kingdom of God, but instead they will end up in that other kingdom. You know, the one where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Uh, instead of heaven, uh, they will end up in hell. And uh, what this tells us is that there are people who assume that they are followers of Christ, but in reality, they are not. They may be people who are in the church, 
but they're not of the church. There are people who think and assume that they belong to God, but unfortunately, in the end, they do not. They may be Christmas and Easter church attenders or consistent church members. They may even be church leaders like elders or deacons or even pastors. They have maybe done ministry in the name of Jesus. But at the end of the day, when all is said and done, and when they come to see Jesus face to face during Judgment Day, instead of hearing Jesus say, well done, good and faithful servant, they will hear Jesus say, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. That means in the end, Jesus does not consider them as their followers. And if Jesus does not know them, it means they're not going to heaven because Jesus is the only way to God. No one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27. Um, our scripture today, just to clarify, it's not saying that these are people who were trying to fool Jesus. Uh, they were not pretending to follow Jesus. I mean, those are different kind of people. You know, the kind that the Bible describes in other passages. Instead, the one who Jesus describes here are people who sincerely believe. And they appear to be believers. Uh, but again, in reality, they are not. And they have been described in many ways. You know, like they are nominal Christians or Christians in name only. Um, others may call them cultural Christians uh, or sleepy Christians. I don't know if you've heard of that term, you know, sleepy Christians. Uh, maybe most of the time during my sermon, maybe that, that happens. Um, or maybe religious Christians, you know, religious, you know, in that, in that sense. Or Sunday only Christians. You know, so these come in many different labels, uh, the kind of Christians that they are. Uh, but no matter what they're called, these people, they call themselves as Christians, but uh, they don't really know Christ. They may profess to know about Christ and, and even Christian doctrine, even the essential Christian doctrine. They may know Jesus about Jesus in their minds, but they do not know Jesus in their hearts. They have not generally turned away from their sins and follow him and make him the center of their lives. Now, we're talking about the presence of this kind of Christian uh, because it's very important for us to know as a church, especially with regards to outreach and discipleship. I mean, we're moving a lot more towards outreach these days, especially for next year. So uh, it's important to know about uh, certain types of people we need to reach out to. A lot of times when we talk about outreach, we talk about sharing the gospel of Christ with those who say they are not Christians, right? Like Buddhists, um, Jehovah's Witness, atheists, agnostics, or whatever other background any person may come from, especially, you know, we're, we live in a diverse uh, area. I mean, it's Southern California. Or when we talk about outreach, we think of demonstrating God's goodness in the community, you know, performing community service for the homeless, donating to charity, whether it's in Thailand or some local organization here in the San Gabriel Valley. But if we are a church that is committed to following the Great Commission, it means we are meant to do what it takes to make disciples of all kinds of people. Uh, not just people who admit they are non-believers, but also people who may sincerely and honestly believe in God and may even go to church and do good works, but in the end, they're not really genuine followers of Christ. Um, there's this author, Dean in Sarah, uh, he wrote a recent book that's entitled Unsaved Christians. In it, he presents some interesting statistics on this group of people that he calls nominal or cultural Christians. Now, of course, I think a lot of you know, you know, if you read the news, uh, in America, there's been a rise in people who claim to have no religious affiliation, right? You know, the, the nuns, uh, N-O-N-E, not N-U-N-S. Um, Americans who say they have no religion are said to be 22.8% of the population. Uh, Dean Insera mentions that in a study of U.S. adults, 80% claim to believe in God, 
but only 56% believe in the God who is described in the Bible. I mean, that's a big percentage of people who are nominal, cultural, unsaved or sleepy, you know, whatever you call them. Um, it seems to me that this segment of the population is a big mission field that is underestimated um, and underreached, even as they number a lot more than the members of many individual Christian denominations. And uh, you can find them anywhere, whether it's in this neighborhood, uh, your own neighborhood, your work, your school, your friends, or perhaps maybe even your own relatives. Um, to identify who they are among us, uh, Dean in Sarah classifies people into three types, uh, just to make it easy on us. In Sarah says you can look at all the people around us and segregate them into just three categories of people. Uh, so I'm going to go through the three types. The first type of person is the convinced Christian believer, someone who's convinced. Uh, this person is not perfect by any means, but the person believes in the gospel of Christ and responds to the gospel by repenting of their sins and following Christ. This person has Christian principles based on the Bible and a relationship with Christ that impacts or make a difference in their daily lives. This person has a spiritual hunger for God. The God of, uh, that we read about in this Bible, the God of which we have a relationship with, and uh, this person has a hunger for learning the Word of God that comes alive in that person's daily Christian walk. So that's the first type. The second type of person is the professed non-believer. This could be someone who's an atheist or a person of a different tradition or an agnostic. And the person admits to being a non-believer in Christ. So, you know, so that's pretty cut and dry. Now the third type of person is the unsaved Christian. This person can be described in many ways. So I'm going to spend some time to do that. Uh, because to know some of these ways can help us get a clue or perspective on who they may be so we can recognize them. Now, I'm just going to tell you a few general ways. You know, it's, you know I don't want to try to put people in a box by doing that. But it's important that we at least have a starting point in terms of what to look for uh, to gain a better recognition uh, for this third type of person. So, in terms of belief, the unsaved Christian, they, they believe in God. They believe in heaven. It's actually insulting for them if we think that they don't believe in God. You know, they, they may look at God as, you know, the man upstairs. Uh, or God in a generic sense. I mean, what else? What else can be called? The man, the big guy, yes. <laughs> you know, it could be that. Um, they may also know Bible stories, right? Like uh, the birth of Jesus, the miracles, the resurrection. Uh, they can tell you why we celebrate Easter and why Jesus came and died for our sins. Although they may have their own spin or opinion on what that means. Uh, during this Advent season, they may have the nativity scene in their houses, along with other explicitly uh, Christmas or Christian decorations. They believe in prayer and in the power of prayer, especially if other people pray for them and their needs. So you can see an outreach opportunity there. <laughs> uh, they believe good people go to heaven. And uh, during my years as a hospice chaplain, you know, that seems to be the belief that is there by default. You know, I, I've never found any nominal Christian family who expressed that their family member is going to hell. I mean, I, I just never found that. Their departing loved one is not perfect, but the person is good. So for them, that means the person is going to heaven. Uh, especially if he or she did more good things in life than bad things. I mean, you, you kind of get the picture, right? More good than bad. Um, although, you know, they can't tell you who measures that and how do you measure that and so on and so forth. Um, as long as you are in the nice list, and not on the naughty list, you are in, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, it's logical, you know? You are destined for heaven, you know? Unfortunately, God is not a major player in the decision. 
Now, some of these Christians also think that just because their families belong to generations of Christians, they inherited their faith in Christ. They're not aware that God has no grandchildren. You know, you may inherit money or property or your good looks or whatever you think your looks are um, or many other things, but you can never inherit your Christian faith. And that's because people are responsible for their own faith. Also, this kind of Christian thinks that baptism or confirmation or the saying of the sinner's prayer is the basis of why someone is saved instead of being born again or being born of the Holy Spirit because of what Christ did on the cross for us. For them, for these people, they think that those people who call themselves born again Christians uh, are not normal Christians, but are instead, they are Christians who are more into their religion or more serious about their faith. You know, it's, it's as if Jesus wants his disciples divided into those who are more serious and those who are not, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like that's sort of the concept. Um, they see born again types as some kind of super Christian who, you know, good for them. They're getting their life from their religion. Um, it's, like, it's like the thought is if Jesus, Jesus wants his followers to be classified as those who get their lives from him and those that get their lives from some other things. You know, that's sort of the logic there. Um, I mean, these are just some of the traits, traits or characteristics that nominal or, or cultural Christians may have. And uh, we will be talking about this more uh, in this sermon series. But uh, it's important to see why we need to recognize them and why we need to reach out and minister to them as well. Now, uh, personally, I can see the importance of reaching out to them because uh, I used to be this kind of Christian, you know, Christian. Um, like majority of Filipinos, I, I was born into the Catholic faith. I'm not here to say bad things about that denomination, but only in how I practice the faith. Um, I come from a nominal Christian family, you know, Catholics in name only, or cultural Catholics. I was educated in Catholic schools. I knew a lot of the Bible stories, but growing up, I never read the Bible, nor even owned one. I mean, it's supposed to be very hard to interpret and to read, right? I mean, I need that, I need that stamp of approval from, uh, uh, from whatever body the Catholic body had, you know, that, that imprimatur kind of thing. Um, you know, so I believed in God, and I believed in the Trinity, of course, but my daily life was not affected by that. I didn't know that the Bible says that even demons believe in God, you know, even demons did that, and, and look what it did to them. I mean, they didn't affect their lives either. So, so much for the value of just believing in God. And I also thought being good earns your way to heaven. As long as you do more good things than bad, 